Is it possible for us to have a question so that it's easier for us to solve with the definition of derivative rather than the differentiation rules? So I'm a calculus teacher. I teach calculus 1 every now and then, and this happens to me all the time whenever I teach calculus 1, and I don't like it at all. And I think if you are a calculus teacher as well, you agree with me that you don't like this either. What am I talking about? Check this out. Suppose we have a function, and let's just do an easy one, let's say x squared. And of course, one of the biggest things in calculus 1 is to find the derivative. And of course, as all the teachers should do, we should be talking about the definition of derivative. And maybe we can give some interpretations geometrically first before we show the formula, right? But let's just focus on the formula, namely the definition of derivative. And again, this is what most teachers will do. f prime of x, this right here is by definition the limit as h approaching 0. And here we have the difference quotient, which is f of x plus h minus f of x and all over h. And of course, just work this out. And you will tell your the students to write this down again. Nobody likes that. I don't either, to be honest, but we still have to do it to be legit. Anyway, Put that in there, we get x plus h squared minus f of x, which is just x squared, all over h. And now open this, and still write this down again. Limit as h approaching 0. This right here becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and then minus x squared, all over h. And now you see, this and that cancel out very nicely. And right here we can factor the h, and then we have 2x plus h. Very good, because now you see, this h and that h cancel out perfectly. And now we can just put a 0 in here, and we just end up with 2x. Wow, cool. But you know, there's always going to be at least one student. So teacher, teacher, can't you just look at the 2 and bring that to the front and the minus 1 and you're done? Let me show you guys what I mean. Of course, not student, or maybe sometimes students. They will just say, Bring the 2 to the front, minus 1, and then you get f prime of x, and you just end up with 2x to the first power, and then you are done in like 2 seconds. Impressive! I know this too, you know? The point right here is to talk about the definition of derivative. And you know, sometimes when we are encountering a new function that we don't know its derivative yet, we actually will have to use the definition of derivative in order to reason out what the derivative should be. Because, for example, if today we have f of x being equal to 2 to the x, well, I'm going to just switch around. We, can we just do the power rule? Is the answer just going to be bring the power to the front and minus 1, and we get x times 2 to the x minus 1 power? Is that right? I will leave that to you guys. But anyway, I do have to admit this. This is definitely much quicker. Of course, if I have to do this question, on the street. I will use the power rule 100%, right? But this gives me a question. Of course, I have an example for you guys, so check this out. So here's the question. We have the function 2 to the x minus 1 times 2 to the x minus 2 times 2 to the x minus 3 and so on up to 2 to the x minus 10. And we have to find the derivative of this function at 0. Well, I know you have the power rule, the product rule, and all the other shortcuts, also maybe the implicit differentiation or the logarithmic differentiation. But I believe the easiest way to do this right here is actually to use the definition of derivative. So check this out. By definition, we know this right here will be the limit as h approaching 0. And because we have the x value is equal to 0, so this is just f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 and then all divided by h. Well, let's see. This is the limit as h approaching 0. And let's see, let's see, let's see. This right here is just f of h, meaning we can put h into all the x's. That's all. So we get... What's f of 0 though? When we put 0 in here, 2 to the 0 is 1, minus 1 is 0. The whole thing becomes 0, so we just have to minus 0 here. And again, this right here is just f of 0. Very nice, huh? O divided by h. Now, this right here doesn't matter, of course. And we're just going to pair this and up together. And you'll see why. This right here is the limit 
as h approaching 0. I'm going to focus on this over that, so we get 2 to the h minus 1 over h. But we still have the rest. And remember, the limit of a product is the product of the limit, under the condition that the limits all exist, they do all exist. So I'm just going to write down this and then the rest. Now, check this out. What can we do? Can we just plug in string here? Well, if we do that, 2 to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Over 0. Can we use L'Hopital? No. Don't do L'Hopital. Because, in fact, this limit is required to figure out the derivative of the exponential function 2 to the x. I did a video on that already, so you can check that out. This right here is going to be 2 to the x times ln2. Very cool, huh? This limit is actually just ln2. And then that's done. For the rest, what do we do? Well, just plug in 0 into all the h's. So we get what? So check this out. We have what? Negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3 up to times negative 9. So we see that we have a total of 9 negatives. Therefore, we will have a negative value. And then, of course, 9 times 8 times da 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 up to 1. We can just write it as 9 and a factorial. And if you would like, you can work that out. But I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And you can see that perhaps we can put a negative in the front. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer for this is negative, and that's ready as 9 factorial like this to make it super clear. And then ln2. If you want to learn more calculus, then one good place for you to start is our sponsor today, Brilliant. It is an excellent online learning platform with a big focus on interactive learning. As we can see, this is from their Calculus in a Nutshell course. This course uses visual and physical intuition to present the major topics of calculus namely limits, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. You will walk away with a clear sense of what calculus is and what it can do. I can tell you that taking a course from Brain is really really fun because they will always keep you engaged by storytelling and beautiful animations. Besides calculus, they also have other courses in math, science, and computer science, so you have a lot of choices to choose from. And I have a special link for you guys. Use the link in the description Brilliant.work slash BlackPenRedPen because that way you can get a 20% off discount. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I also want to thank you guys for checking them out. Oh my god, this example is so good because I can at least tell the students that yeah, go ahead and try the other methods, but try to beat this with the so-called shortcut.